talking about this, first diagnosed when I was, I think, entry into poly. So I think that was a routine health checkup. So during the checkup, then they detected some anomaly. So they wanted me to do a follow up uh, at at the hospital itself. Lah. So after the follow up, it was detected that I actually had a polycystic kidney. So they tell me that uh, possibly this might lead into dialysis later in your life. Okay, for a patient who decided a long term plan as a hemodialysis, this patient need to prepare for permanent vascular access. So what is it called? It's actually we call it a fistula. That's we need to do a surgery to connect the artery and the vein together, form a small circuit. And this circuit is used for the nurses to draw the blood when they put in the needle and connect to the machine. And there's a filter in the machine to clean the blood. And after that, return back to the patient. So this surgery itself, from the creation until maturation, take about two to three months time. So for immediate dialysis, we need to put a, perm a temporary access for the patient, which actually immediately that can be used. So for that reason, we actually uh, need to put in the uh, catheter for the patient, when we call it a thunder catheter. So this is a thunder catheter. Okay. So usually we put into the neck of the patient, that's a big wind. And then after that, we will actually put near the heart. For patients who decided for long-term hemodialysis, we need to prepare them for permanent vascular access. First, we will tell them what is it all about. We will ask them where, where is the dominant hand, and then we will actually use the non-dominant hand for the vascular access surgery. So after that, we will need to send the patient for wind mapping. So basically, it's an ultrasound scan. We actually scan the vessel of the hand to measure the diameter of the hand of the vessel and also measure the depth from the overlying skin. So from that, we actually can, can uh, decide what type of surgery to be done and then we will actually will affect the outcome of the surgery itself. So after that, then we will refer the patient to a vascular surgeon. So the surgeon will discuss with the patient regarding the vascular access again. We will discuss with them the risk and complication and what type of surgery. And after that, they will fix the date and the uh, surgery for the patient. So when I was told that I needed to go do dialysis, so I realized that will be a, you'll be a huge change to my lifestyle. Yeah, so I think one important aspect of this will actually be the diet itself. When the kidneys are failing, you might require to do hemodialysis. And when you're on hemodialysis, you need to follow a certain diet. It's what we call the hemodialysis diet. That consists of high protein diet, low salt, low potassium, low phosphate, and restrict your fluid intake. So after my first nephrectomy itself, so I was feeling kind of distressed, uh, distressed because on that I needed to go with dialysis. La. So the mindset wasn't very good, uh, sometimes prone to be, be a bit moody. Then I think in light of this, uh, NUH actually sent in a medical social worker to actually come and see me. Often patients are scared, anxious and filled with a sense of helplessness. We go in and speak with them and their families to provide counselling support to help them cope with these emotions. We also assess the families and patients' resources to manage the cost of dialysis. In the event that patients and their families do not have the resources, we will guide them and advise them on where they can apply for financial assistance from welfare organisations to cope with the cost of dialysis. There are two types of uh, vascular access surgery. The first one is arterial venous fistula, uh, whereby we connect the patient's own vein from the artery to the vein, and then the vein will dilate it up. And after a while, it will be ready for access. Now, second type is arterial venous graft. The graft is an artificial conduit. So we connect the graft to one side of the artery and the other side to the deep vein. And the conduit is tunnel subcutaneously, just underneath the skin, so it will still allow for easier access. So after the creation, then we, uh, ongoing, that there will be a monitoring by the dialysis center and also by the heart clinic itself. And we will follow up constantly with the heart clinic. This was done over a period of six to eight weeks. Most of patients diagnosed with end-stage renal failure, most of them live a fairly normal life. However, they are required to do a three to four times per week dialysis session, each session lasting three to four hours. During each session, the dialysis nurses will carefully monitor the blood flow from the patient to the machine. 
they will make sure that it's smooth, safe and making sure the dialysis time and the function of the fistula is not compromised. Patient with the fistula or the graft has to take special care of their SS arm or limb. Example like no blood taking on the SS arm, no blood pressure monitoring on the SS arm as well, no tight clothing, no lying on the SS arm or sleeping or napping, as well as no contact spot, as well as no lifting of very heavy weights objects. Vascular access surgery is not the permanent solution. Now, patients, some of them are much luckier. They may end up having a renal transplant. Then they can get rid of their vascular access surgery altogether. However, the vascular access surgery itself, sometimes you have to be repeatedly doing more surgery in the future. There are ways that we can help the arterial venous fistula uh, to maintain its longevity. If you come for regular checkup, you do your fistulogram, fistuloplasty regularly, you can take your tablets and also help the blood not to clot. Therefore, all these little things can help the patient to use the fistula for much longer duration. For my dialysis and my vascular access, yeah, we do regular follow-ups every one or two months to look through whether the access is actually uh, doing well, whether is there any action needed on it. And yeah, and if a problem is actually detected, they do show genuine concern to actually solve the problem and ensure that metallicis is not affected at all.